Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today we get to revisit installing a remote oil filter on my Pontiac. Now those of you that have been part of the channel know that I did this like over a year ago. I put this in and I was super excited about it. It made changing oil so much easier because those of you the long tube headers on a Pontiac block know that you have to take the filter housing and the filter off the engine every time you change the filter. It just got annoying, it gets messy, it gets all over the headers, blah, blah, blah. And I wanted to do something cool, so I put uh, the remote oil filter underneath the frame. It was nice and hidden, made it super easy to change oil. Um, and then I got the crazy idea to strengthen the frame with this crazy frame straightening kit I got, which welded into the spot where the remote oil filter was. And obviously I had to remove it and go, and go back to the old fashioned way of putting it on the block. So now we're revisiting it. So now we're gonna, we're gonna put it back in another spot and I have to figure out the spot. Um, but on that note, if you saw that last video where I did a one quart oil filter, you guys called me out on the fact that that pressure relief valve that's in the standard housing is there for a reason. So I heard you, I did. Now here's what everyone's talking about. At high RPM, that valve allows oil to get through the housing, bypasses the filter, so you do not starve your bearings or your valve train. It's actually a brilliant idea. Now, I talked to Butler Performance about that. So, well, what do you do with the remote oil filter because that valve is no longer present? They said, pretty easy. You use a two-quart oil filter. That way, you have enough volume of oil in the two-quart oil filter so you prevent starvation. Brilliant. I trust what Butler says. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna revisit putting the uh, remote oil filter in with a two quart oil filter this time. And I'm gonna use some solid modeling tricks from back in my day, 25 years ago when I used to do solid modeling to fabricate the mounting, a custom mounting bracket. Yeah, I'm gonna try that because I don't wanna cut it out on a piece of cardboard and bang on steel, because you guys know I know how to do that. So subscribe if you haven't, because the follow-on videos, I'm gonna show you, assuming it works, how to do this. So I'm gonna scan the area, I'm gonna put it in CAD, we're gonna model it up, send it to a, um, a prototyping house called Send, Cat, Send, and hopefully get the first part back that works out of the box because we designed it in CAD. Now, if you haven't done so, check out the join button below. It's an easy way for you guys to support the channel. The higher levels you might notice are more for tech support if you're in the middle of your project and I need to help you out. It's a way for me to help out, but you'll notice the highest one. It's about solid modeling because I just went through a five hour class to get refreshed up on how to use solid modeling. And from what you see today, I think you might get excited about uh, what kind of brackets we can make for our cars. So <laughs> that's why those higher levels exist. Now, if you haven't done so, subscribe as well, because the next episode, like I said, assuming this works, will be about how to do it in CAD. So first things first, let's go get under the car, see the area we're talking about, because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be tight, because we have a two quart oil filter now. And this video, by the way, we'll also do A and line cutting and how to put those in, the different mount ideas, the different fitting ideas, because I missed that in the last time I did this video. So we're gonna cover all that. Oh, it's always fun bolting something up. So let's get to it. All right, so this is the passenger side underneath the floorboard, and I taped it up so everyone can see it better at least. Uh, but here is the new chassis stiffening bar that I welded in here, and this is where I had my old Moroso filter mount that was about right there, bolted right on the frame, so obviously took that spot. And then there's this new transmission brace here, it's all welded in. Let me show you what it looks like with the filter on. Now that we have to use a two quart oil filter, now you can see my little challenge here, because we need, still need room here between the filter and this brace to take the filter off. And there's this complex curve. So I was thinking about making a bracket and doing this by hand, like with cardboard and back and forth all the time, that would be cumbersome. Because we also need room for a fitting on the top to come out the back of it. We still have this fitting for inlet. So that's what I'm thinking. That's why solid modeling, I think, would be a perfect idea. 
All right, here's my 3D model of the whole situation. And if we cut over to our bracket only, there's our bracket. And I put in tapped holes, so that's uh, 5 16th, 18 thread. And what we do is, since this is sheet metal, we want a flat file. And this tool makes a flat file before bending. How badass is that? Oh my gosh. Okay, now we take that model and we go to send, cut, send. These guys will laser cut this for us. And we can powder coat it. Gloss black, yes please. Gloss black, let's put that in our cart. There we go, ship it. Two weeks later, here we go, box opening time. Oh my God, I'm so anxious. What the hell? Oh, it's looking good. Oh my God. Oh, how pretty is that? just like we drew it up. All right, first test, which is always a concern when you're painting and you have threaded holes. Are these holes gonna work? So here's my uh, 5 16 18 fastener. And it is gummy. That is actually what I was expecting. So I'm gonna go ahead and chase those holes. I'll show you what I used to do that. And I will mount this right here on the bench, see how it looks. So whenever you work with machine parts a lot, I always recommend chasing those holes. So these are actually thread chasers. They're not taps. So they're, the way they're made is they're dull. They won't cut the steel, but they'll clear out that hole for you. And that's what I'm going to run through each of these holes and we'll see how the fastener works. Oh my God. Look at how beautiful this is. So excited. So I have grade eight. Um, shouldered bolts with lock ring and grade 8 washers in there but oh my god how bitchin is that all right now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mock it up in the car because we still have to make our mounting bolt holes here I'm also going to use grade 8s for those uh, also 5 16 18 thread and we'll put those thread certs in the frame and uh, let's see how it looks oh there we go Look at that. I'm sitting flush. I'm gonna go ahead and trace it where it is. I'll take the bracket off so, I, so it's less cumbersome and then I can trace the inner holes and get our thread certs in there. But that's looking really good. I like it. Um, in case you guys are wondering, this hole here is for basically for oil pressure. I can plug it because I have a mechanical gauge in the car now, that automator gauge. Um, but, for kicks and giggles if I want my dash gauge to work. Let me see if uh, I left enough room by accident because I didn't model it for the sending unit. Oh my God, I like them apples. Let's turn this a little bit. Ah. It totally fits. Oh my God, how bitching is that? Again, that's optional. I can still decide later not to use it, but let me get back to work. Get the, trace these holes, punch them out, and get going. So this is what we need to put in there. It's a thread, thread cert or nut, nut rivet, whatever you want to call it. But it has to go right here and right here. Another beauty of using blue tape so you can draw all over it. But we're going to center punch. Got my 1 8 inch drill bit, 90 degree head. Just as a pilot hole. Damn, that must be dull. Now you can take a step drill bit and creep up to the diameter, which is actually the second to last one here. And we'll have that diameter. But a bang, Let's see. Yeah, I think I just have to deburr that hole a little bit and I'll fit. Took the tape off, the tape was getting in the way, but bam, just like that. 
I'll get my special tool, put those in. So this is the tool that's used to put those uh, thread certs in or nut rivets. And it comes in 90 degree handle style. It also comes in a larger 180 degree, which I'll probably use in this bottom hole just to, for easy sake of ease. Um, but one of you guys pointed out, if you put JB weld on here before you put in here, it actually adds a layer of uh, waterproofedness, so to speak, and solidifies that bond so these don't strip out. And uh, that's a great idea. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you the end result. There we go. The JB weld's still drying, but we are in like Flynn, as they say. So I'm gonna let that dry overnight and then I'll go ahead and tighten everything up. See how it looks. Yes, look at how sturdy this is. Woo, yes. Now, you guys might have noticed there are two vertical slots in the oil filter mount. And then there's two, I put vertical slots here. Um, the jury's out, but if I were to do a rev two, I might do horizontal slots here. So you have vertical adjustment and horizontal, but this is pretty awesome. There's enough gap in these slots too, to actually adjust, to twist it and to move it back and forth. So you can get pretty, you don't have to get super accurate on those holes, but man, this is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, rest of the bracketry on here and the filter and see how it looks. Oh yes, there it is. And I can twist the filter. It's like almost touching the floorboard. Like if I push up on it, I can feel it touch, but it is not touching the floor. And frankly, I only model to here and right here, the floor dips down. There's actually an awkward bend in it. I might be able to get my attitude adjuster and just push the floor up a little bit and then it'll after give us about another quarter inch I can go up because I still have room above the, the filter mount which I will consider but for now let's see if the filter comes off because I got a I got a finger width behind the brace here yeah. <laughs> yes oh that is so awesome I love it sorry I'm getting too excited Okay, now we get to the next step. We got to put our fittings on and just the fittings so we can run the hose and measure hose length. Okay, here's round one. That's tough to tell, I know, because they're black, but these are size dash 12 AN or RB oil ring backed fittings on the housing. These are size 10 hoses. So it goes um, size 12, ORB size 10 AN. So this is a 10 AN fitting to the hose. Same here. And so what you want to do is put all your fittings on first, and then we start measuring hose lengths. So let's go ahead and talk about the uh, adapter plate for the block. All right, let's talk engine side now. So I have a, an adapter plate from Butler Performance. It's a little bit thicker than the standard mount. So you probably should upgrade the length of your bolts. These are 3 8 16 bolts, inch and a quarter length. So I'm going to use those for this mount. And the way you look at this is you just match up the holes accordingly and the gasket. There's a reusable gasket from BOP Engineering. So those of you guys that like taking this on and off all the time, get this. So I'm going to use this again and put it back on the car right now. The reason is I have chosen to use the one half MPT threaded in version to dash 10 AN. The reason is the height advantage because you have an option. You can use this like a threaded in, obviously it's too big for this hole, to a dash 10 AN. That gets you to an elevation of say, yay, right there. And then you'd have to get one of these adapters. So you can see the length there the elevation there so you might hit the headers that's why i've elected to do the screw in to a 90 degree right to the 10 a.m the beauty of the other connectors though you can get different angles as you probably guys know like a 60 a 45 straight whatever we have plenty of options so the reason i'm going to put it in the car is because tightening this can be a bear on the bench so we're going to do one hose at a time. And the way you think about this is the middle hole goes to the middle hole on the adapter plate. So if this is the, the mount, the oil goes 
in through here into the engine. So it goes from the outlet, which is the middle hole on the adapter plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this up in the engine and mount, I'm gonna take this off the existing, my old hose, put this in here loosely, cause I still have to take this out and we'll measure our hose length. All right, so I went ahead and attached it to the uh, one end of the hose and you can barely see it, I know, but it's only threaded in like two threads so I can take it out. But the point is you wanna play with the hose length so you're not resting on the header, of course. So I'm gonna push the hose up like that. See how it swivels? It actually swivels when it's tight. It will do the same thing. And right, it's resting right here against the body. So well out of the way of the headers. So when you play with your hose length and you've figured out where you want to cut, you take the nut off because the nut will show you the thread depth. Do you see that thread depth? It's not critical on long hose lengths like this, but that's where you want to cut. So take a silver Sharpie, find the spot you want to cut and make a mark. Now let's go hit the bench and I'll show you how to properly cut hose and put fittings on. So real quick, the anatomy of these fittings is the nut goes obviously on the thread, but this nut has to fit over the end of the hose in that direction. And if you cut hose improperly, it actually frays on you. Now this is an exaggeration, but because this is the one I took off, but you can't get it on, right? And if, especially with stainless braid, it just flares out and it makes it real fun, if you know what I mean. So the trick is get some clear tape like this, but that is no sticky. So this is from Aeroflow. I'll put a link in the description. You might be able to use mat, um, saran wrap too, by the way. So we're gonna wrap this as tight as we can around our um, our mark we made. Remember, that's why we used a, a silver Sharpie because we can see it on the black. We're gonna dead center right over that mark and then we're gonna cover it again tight with normal tape like painter's tape or athletic tape if you have it and that will keep that fray in. So there's my painter's tape and dead center's my mark and you can use like a fine tooth hacksaw or bandsaw, but by far my favorite are dedicated hose shears. It takes it clean off. Voila. After that cut, it'll look like a little oval. So you just press it on the bench to make it round again. And now we can take our tape off. Little to no fray, exactly what we wanted. And now we take the nut, put it on there. Just like that. You're probably gonna have to push it on your bench or bang it on a piece of wood until it gets to that shoulder on the thread there. So it should look like that. Now let's go hit the vise. So a few things I highly suggest when you're doing a lot of AN hose work are dedicated jaws for your vise. These are aluminum. You can get polymer as well and they won't scratch the nut or if you put the fitting in that end. The other thing I recommend are AN wrenches. These are also aluminum and it'll cut down on the marring. You can use standard wrenches, just be careful. But most importantly, you gotta get some lube, gentlemen. This is dedicated for AN hoses because you'd be surprised how hard it is to turn when it gets towards the end. And put on the snout too. This actually goes inside the hose and then this end cuts inside that rubber hose. It's called a cutter end. So be nice and gentle. There we go. And start screwing it in by hand. And now you can use your wrench, but make sure you're not pushing the hose out while you're tightening. So I'll hold one end and then tighten with the other. You know you're almost done when it gets like super tight. And I got like, gosh, like 10 to 15 thousandths in between the hex and the nut. I'm just gonna keep going until the flats our level and it'll look professional like that all right all set to put in the car i got a new o-ring for the oil filter side and this is a yellow ptft ptfe sorry uh, it's made for petroleum products so the white stuff doesn't deteriorate and i would only put like two threads in i'm not going to tighten it quite yet until i get that other hose finalized there we go nice and tucked under the body and Mike the Crazy Plumber.
back at it, but it looks spectacular. I added some 45s, and I have no idea if this is going to work because I think this needs a ground path, and there's so much paint and powder coating on this. Who knows? But at least I'll wire it up and find out. If it doesn't work, that's the reason. So this is super sturdy, and it's already given me ideas to do another solid modeling project of making uh, like a cover plate. That would be badass just to prevent any rock damage to the oil filter, etc. Would hate to have that happen on the road, but whoa, I love it. Okay, a couple more things we got to cover. I told you you would like this episode. <laughs> now, a few more tips. Make sure you prime your filter when you do an oil change. Put a quart of oil in a quart filter, but two quarts in a two quart filter. I'm not worried about being horizontal. Air will be pushed out due to the pressure. Now, when you have a first time installation, I think it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, check for leaks. So what I recommend for the first time, or anytime you change the oil, frankly, because those lines are gonna drain all the oil out of them, is prime your engine. So take the coil off your um, coil or your distributor, or you take your power lead off your HEI distributor, crank the engine until you hear the air go through the valve train in the valve area, you're gonna hear it, and then it'll solidify. That means your engine's primed. Then run the engine for about a minute. Check for leaks. <laughs> run a full heat cycle, especially on brand new lines that we put, just put in. Check for leaks, tighten everything up after the engine cools, and then you're good to go. So next episode, I will detail exactly how I did all that CAD modeling and scanned that area to put in my CAD software with free scanning and free CAD tools. That's right. I'll show you how to do it. If you want me to help you design a bracket, join the full Monte Club. There's different levels. Uh, obviously the basic levels to support the channel, the higher levels, I will help you CAD design a bracket. Yeah, let's have some fun together. So until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.